Hey guys, I hate to interrupt, but I just wanted to take a moment to say if you're studying for the CPA exams and you like the visual learning approach that we take in this video, definitely check out Universal CPA Review's free trial. You can do this by going to www.universalcpareview.com or you can click on the link in the description of this video. From there, you could take a sneak peek at Universal's platform, which includes animated video lectures, study guides, and practice questions with task-based simulations that come with video explanations that walk you through the solution step-by-step, -step, kind of like having a tutor by your side. Okay, enough of that. Let's get back to it. Okay, so uh, the question becomes, what do we need to know for the exam? And although the exam can test you on the single step income statement, which if you do see, you should be salivating at the mouth, right? Because this is going to be super simple. But the unfortunate reality is that most US GAAP reporting companies report their income statement using the multi-step income statement, which unfortunately means that this is likely what you're going to see on the exam. Okay, but it's not that unfortunate because there's a lot to learn and this is good stuff. Okay, so the multi-step income statement is a little bit more robust, a little bit more broken out. There's more detail that financial statement readers want to know and see. So at this point, if you're studying for the CPA exam, you're likely relatively familiar with the income statement. You might be thinking, piece of cake, I know everything about the income statement. Revenues minus expenses, right? Easy enough. And although you're not wrong, it isn't the most complicated thing in the world. There are some sneaky things that could pop up and very easily cost you dumb points, which we never want. So in order to avoid losing stupid points, we got to build ourselves a mental map just like we do. So step one in our mental map is going to be understanding the fact that we're first calculating income from continuing operations. So income from continuing operations will include two different sections. We have the operating section and the non-operating section. Okay, so the operating section is going to include operating revenues and operating expenses. So essentially everything that goes into the ordinary course of business. So this is going to include our depreciation expenses, SG&A, right, sales and general administrative expenses, wages expenses, rent expenses, etc. Whereas our non-operating section is going to include some of the miscellaneous non-ordinary course of business income and expense items. So this will include things like your interest income, your interest expense, this is going to be the gain on the sale from various investments, right? Could be the sale of Joey's Pizza Oven. Could be losses from a pending lawsuit, right? Maybe Joey's Pizza got sued. Okay, so as you can see, non-ordinary course of business activity, but still income and losses that impact our bottom line. Okay, so the next step we need to remember in our mental map is going to be something that is somewhat new to the FASB literature. And this is the fact that extraordinary items are no longer going to be included. They're simply going to get lumped into the non-operating section of the income statement. So a common question you might see on the exam might ask for the effects of transactions that are considered infrequent in occurrence or unusual in nature. So if you see something that is infrequent in occurrence and or unusual in nature, what you need to remember is that it's still going to be presented. It's just simply going to be presented as a component of income from continuing operations. That's always going to be correct. Okay, so income from continuing operations, as we said, is the first bottom line income item that we're going to be calculating. Okay, so this is going to be separate from what's referred to as income from discontinued operations, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But for now, we're talking about income from continuing operations. And as we said, within the income from continuing operations calculation, we have both this operating section and this non-operating section. Okay, so all I'm trying to say here is that if you see transactions on the exam that are described as infrequent in occurrence or unusual in nature, these are always going to be presented within the non-operating section as a component of income from continuing operations. Okay, so let me give you an example. The company experiences a loss from a natural disaster. Let's say the company's inventory is warehoused in Oklahoma, and let's say that a tornado comes in and blows their warehouse away. Okay, that's terrible. That's a loss to the company. And that loss is considered unusual in nature and infrequent in occurrence, right? This isn't an ordinary loss. This is just a bad year that they're having. Okay, so this loss from say the loss of their inventory, right? The loss of their warehouse that they owned, this is all going to be a loss that is reported in the non-operating section. All right, also keep in mind that an additional disclosure would not be necessary. Okay, so the next step is a little bit of a sneaky one when it comes to the multi-step income statement in our mental map. So we got to know the differences in what is considered and classified as a selling expense 
versus a general administrative expense, right? You might think of this as one lump sum amount categorized as SG&A. Okay, but sometimes the exam is going to ask you the differences in what is categorized as a selling expense versus a general administrative expense. So selling expenses can include wages, can also include commissions to those who are selling on the company's behalf, right? This naturally makes sense. So this is your sales team. This can also include advertising expenses, right? So you're thinking about the cost to sell. So a good example of this could be naming a stadium. Think of a professional stadium and a professional team. The whole point is to build the brand image. This can also include shipping expenses, right? If we're incurring the freight out expense, this is going to be considered a selling expense, but we'll elaborate a little bit more on this in step four. So what else can go into building the brand? This could be social media costs, right? The cost of marketing on Facebook or Instagram, Twitter. This could also be promotional expenses and trade show expenses, right? Anything that goes into building this brand awareness is going to be considered a selling expense. Whereas general administrative expenses are going to be your officer salaries. This could be your legal expenses or your accounting expenses, right? You're thinking about back office nitty gritty work when you're thinking about general administrative expenses. Okay, so we got to know the differences between a selling expense and a general administrative expense. Okay, and the fourth and final step in our sneaky mental map is going to be some of these additional miscellaneous concepts that you got to know and understand. Ooh, let's take a quick break and catch our breath. If you like what you see in this video, well, you're not the only one. Many students who've studied with Universal CP Review have found a ton of success. If you don't believe me, you can see for yourself by taking a look at our reviews on Trustpilot. Trustpilot is the most legitimate third-party review site that ensures that our reviews are completely valid. Universal CP Review is not only the best CPA exam study option for visual learners, but it's also the most cost-effective option out there. So if you've already spent thousands of dollars on other CPA review courses, we totally understand and we want to help you out. So take a look at our free seven day trial to see if Universal CPA review is a good fit for you. You can check out our free trial by going to www.universalcpareview.com or simply by clicking on the link in the description of this video. All right, we got freight in and freight out. What is the difference between the two? Freight is just our transferring costs, right? Our shipping costs the movement of goods that we are selling or purchasing. Freight in is the cost of receiving delivered goods. All right, so if this is freight in, it will be capitalized to inventory and also included in cost of goods sold when it is subsequently sold. Okay, so if you see freight in, this is not going to be classified in the multi-step income statement. It's classified as inventory and is going to be capitalized to that inventory, which is going where? That's going to the balance sheet. All right, when they sell that inventory, then yeah, sure, it's going to be classified as cost of goods sold, which at that point, it will be presented on the income statement. All right, freight out is going to be the cost of shipping goods to a customer. All right, so this is going to be expensed as a selling expense within our SG&A expenses in the operating section of the multi-step income statement. All right, so income from continuing operations will include the freight out expense. All right, something else that's sneaky to note, interest will always be included in non-continuing operations. All right, so again, this is our multi-step income statement mental map. We got to know it. Okay, so what we're going to do now is put together a multi-step income statement straight from a trial balance. Very frequently, you're going to get these types of questions in a task-based simulation format. Okay, so I know the horror. Okay, but this situation where you receive a trial balance or some documentation of the sort and are asked to put together a multi-step income statement has task-based simulation written all over it. Okay, so like we said, they might just give you a plain old trial balance and require you to put together this multi-step income statement. And you might be thinking to yourself, what kind of sicko would do that? Well, the examiners at the AICPA would, all right? So we gotta be ready for anything that they throw your way. So taking a look at Joey's Pizza Shop's trial balance, and what we're going to do is put together this multi-step income statement. So we're gonna go down the line one by one and categorize each of these items. So starting off with allowance for doubtful accounts, and this is going to be reported as a contra asset. All right, so therefore it's going to be reported in the balance sheet. All right, account receivables is a current asset, and this is going to be the amount that will net the total account receivables less the total amount that we expect not to collect. Okay, so with that being said, both account receivables and this allowance for doubtful accounts will be located in the balance sheet. These will be ignored for income statement purposes. Next up, we have an advertising expense. Okay, so advertising expenses will be treated as a selling expense, right? SGNA. Got to know the differences in what's reported as a selling expense versus a general and administrative expense. 
Okay, but bottom line is this is going to be located within the operating section of the multi-step income statement. Okay, so what about accumulated depreciation? This is another contra asset that is getting reported in the balance sheet. This is the collective amount of depreciation expense that has accumulated. Okay, so once again, getting reported in the balance sheet, not the income statement. Commission expenses are selling expenses as well. So this is going to be reported within SG&A. All right, so right here in the operating section when calculating income from continuing operations. Cost of goods sold, absolutely going to be reported in the income statement. If you don't know that, shame on you. All right, sales less cost of goods sold will equal our gross profit. All right, so Joey's Pizza is going to record cost of goods sold right here at the top underneath sales. How about the gain on the sale of an investment? That's getting reported in the balance sheet. No, not the balance sheet. This is getting reported in the income statement. Right, Gains and losses are getting reported in the non-operating section of the income statement. So will interest expenses and interest revenue. Okay, so interest expenses and interest revenue getting included, but once again, they're getting reported here in the non-operating section. Okay, and as we said, gains and losses. So losses on the settlement of a lawsuit will be reported in the income statement, not the balance sheet. But with that said, they're getting reported in the non-operating section. Okay, so going straight down here in the non-operating section. Office equipment expenses, right? This isn't equipment. Equipment would be property, plant, and equipment as a fixed asset in the balance sheet. But because it says office equipment expenses, that tells us it's going to be reported in the income statement as an operating expense. Okay, so it's going right here under administrative expenses in the operating section. Okay, same story for office supplies. Office supplies are administrative expenses. All right, we need pens and paper and pencils to do our job, right? So in the event that we do need all that stuff, that's going to be categorized as an office supplies expense. Ordinary course of operations, it's an operating expense. Prepaid expenses, this one's a little bit sneaky. So this has the word expense in it, but it's actually not an expense. Prepaid expenses are when a company prepays an amount that is going to be owed. So maybe they're paying rent in advance for the next three months. This is a reduction of a future liability. So this is going to be a current asset. All right, so prepaid expenses would be reported in the balance sheet, not the income statement. Sales is our top line item. Again, this is going right above cost of goods sold to calculate gross profit. All right, so that's going all the way to the top. And wages payable, finally, this is a payable. This would be reported in the balance sheet, not the income statement. Okay, so we got to be prepared to take a bunch of information from a trial balance and slap together a multi-step income statement. Okay, that's going to be 101, and we need to be able to do this to get through some of these tough questions and some of these task-based simulations. All right, and beyond that, we need to know the sneaky items. We got to know the differences in what's a selling expense versus an administrative expense. We got to know what's classified as operating versus non-operating within this income statement as well. All right, let's keep moving.